Father Ed Estock here. Father Joshua Trefney. We're coming to you from a new place uh, for most of you. We're just in the parish offices today. Um, but uh, this will be one of the last moments in the parish office recorded. So, uh, you know, right. before we move to our new parish center, so get excited for that because we'll be doing some videos. Right. From a Moving time. day is set for June 15th. So uh, here we are just three weeks away or mm -hmm. four weeks away. Um, so, and welcome, and we are contemplating the uh, coming Feast of the Ascension. As you all, good Catholics know, and, and as it is in the Vatican, uh, Ascension Thursday is still Ascension Thursday. Mm -hmm. However, we have uh, in this diocese and in almost every diocese in the United States of America and around the world, uh, we have uh, transferred the Feast of the uh, Ascension to be celebrated on the seventh Sunday of Easter, which mm -hmm. is the one coming up. So uh, we will not be celebrating uh, on uh, Thursday of this week. We will not be celebrating Ascension Thursday, uh, but rather we'll be celebrating Ascension Sunday. And uh, that's because it's such an important aspect and feature of our lives. You know, when you're saying the rosary, uh, yeah. We have the the um, glorious mysteries, and so we have the resurrection. Then we have, boom, the, the ascension. And uh, in the creed, that's what we say. He rose from the dead and ascended to the right hand of the Father. So this um, uh, mystery of the ascension is uh, important and central. And so the bishops, and the leaders of the church, wanted uh, um, this feast to be celebrated in a more prominent way uh, in the church. Uh, so, traditionalist people don't like it, but uh, it makes sense. So, uh, and that's what we're going to do. So, because <laughs> we are obedient Catholics, yeah, right. So we are we're reading these scriptures, and you know we're also anticipating that in a week, uh, well, two weeks from now, but a week from Ascension Sunday, we're going to have Pentecost, and so uh, we're starting to really gear up. There's a lot of talk of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of talk of um, you know, the the Spirit descending on them, they're them doing signs and wonders and all of that, uh, all that stuff that happens on Pentecost. So as we're seeing this stuff become to like percolating to the top of the gospel and to the top of the um, first reading, we're seeing this, um, this commissioning, commissioning that's happening. And so we're kind of, we've been stuck on that word a little bit, which, you know, mm -hmm. we love our words. And so co-mission means to actually uh, participate together, right, co, in, in a, a mission, in a, an objective, in a, uh, a ministry of some kind. So there is, so what is the commissioning that's happening in this gospel? And you all, again, you, uh, traditional or faithful Catholics will uh, be familiar with this portion of the, the gospel as being called the Great Commissioning. So it's not, we didn't just, you know, suck it out of our thumb. Right. We, we, uh, <laughs> so we are right in line with the uh, Holy Catechism of the Catholic Church and the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Great Commissioning, of course, is that we should go out and baptize all nations in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, and teaching them. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that is the commission given by Christ to his faithful apostles. And some form of that commissioning happens in every one of the Gospels. It's worded a little differently in each one of them, but that commissioning takes place uh, to all believers in each one of the Gospels. Right. So uh, this is really a helpful thing for us because so, well, what does it mean for me to be... Uh, uh, sharing in the mission of Jesus Christ and his church. And as well, it means that you're going to go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So uh, what we see in the Great Commission then is uh, the life of the church mm -hmm. and the ministry of the church. And um, as you good Catholics also know, that we have this two-sided uh, um, uh, tablet, if you will, of the word of God, proclaim, teach, and baptize. So uh, act in the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. Act as Christ in the world. So baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have to teach and we have to act. We have to speak and we have to love. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, 
this uh, we see this then in the work of the church mm -hmm. um, those of you that are good catholics also know that there are two features of the life of the church not only in its mission of teaching and uh, action. action but there is uh the scriptures the word of god and the tradition which is the life of the church the so we so there's many ways that we reflect upon this commissioning mm -hmm. when we look at the life of the church and then life of the individual christians so yeah and so how what what is really interesting right is that the commissioning takes place uh on ascension and so right it's traditionally on a on a thursday before the sixth or the seventh week uh of easter and then you know you wait uh 10 days and then you have the pe then you have pentecost and so there's the commissioning, the giving of the mission, the invitation, I should say, really, mm -hmm. the invitation of, of to join in the mission to the apostles happens. And then they spend 10 days uh, without Jesus after he ascends. And in that, they are freaking out a little bit. And but they're really they're not they haven't begun the mission yet. They haven't been uh, they've received uh, there, so in our lives, we've kind of reflected on how they have received their letter. So when when a priest is to be ordained, you receive a letter calling you to orders. So it's you, the time where your uh, vocare, your vocation, has been called out of you, and so um, but you're not ordained then. So like John Deacon John Ryu, who is going to be joining us this coming weekend. Um, he received his letter, uh, you know, about a month before they were ordained deacons. And the same then is true for, for us in our own lives. Um, and in that waiting, you have sometimes some anticipation, some eagerness, some desire, maybe some fear or anxiety. But there's always this like directionality that's happening, a longing for the uh, for the mission to begin, mm -hmm. and so we, uh, you know, we've been kind of looking at this as this is the point where the invitation has been laid, and mm -hmm. now we're and, and the designation. Uh, yes. So the bishop calls me mm -hmm. as a baptized uh, single man in the Catholic Church. Uh, he calls me to the ordination as a deacon or yes. ordination as a priest. And uh, in that, he has elevated my status, if you will, or changed my status mm -hmm. to now a candidate, yes. yeah. in a sense, for the office of priest in the church. Yeah. However, I have not been empowered and enabled and activated mm -hmm. in that ministry until I am actually ordained. And so we were thinking that this commissioning of the uh, disciples is uh, an announcement, a kind of a proclamation, uh, and it is a designation yeah. of these people as being set up for a particular mission yeah. in the world. And uh, uh, Father Joshua's brother is in the Navy. Yeah. And so we were talking about, well, you know, so we also we commission officers in the military or mm -hmm. all military people they are commissioned so they swear on the bible and all that kind of stuff and they uh after they've uh, you know gone in through their tra training and all that kind of stuff and so they they receive a commission but that doesn't mean that they are sent into battle right right you have to wait for your orders you have to wait for orders to come and so we're seeing this period of ascension to uh, pentecost uh, and this time in the lives of uh, the reality of the lives of the disciples is maybe they have uh, they have now been in the realization of Jesus ascending. So in a sense, losing Jesus from before their eyes, the scripture mm -hmm. says, before their yeah before their eyes. Um, in that letting go of him, it opened them to see themselves as his partners, his yeah. commissioned officers to uh, for this great mission that he right. has for them. Right, because before Jesus ascends, 
they are still in this kind of, um, it's not a bad thing, but they're in this master and student relationship, right? Jesus is the master who knows everything and who's teaching his students what to do. His That's what a disciple was, a student of a master. And so uh, this is almost... Um, their graduation in a way this is this is them uh getting their master's degree or getting their they have now become uh masters themselves and so they they are now on an equal footing and that wasn't possible before jesus um made space for them you know mm -hmm. so this is his uh making space for them commissioning inviting them into uh, cooperative mission work with them so that they're all on an equal level so right. that they can then later receive their orders to do what he did right. and and that invitation right. but we they have to be invited or commissioned or designated to do that first right. yeah i think uh, another good example i think we've used it before is apprenticeship mm -hmm. That we have people who are like a, a welder or something, and he does a it's a long time and a yeah. lot of classes and all that kind of stuff. But he's actually working. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you do like a, a right. fellowship and right. journeyman and, and right. all these different. Same layers. thing with doctors and lawyers or doctors that you know they're in the hospital and they so they are interning. Uh, then they're residents, right? And then but they don't operate in that field without the supervision of the master. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. Uh, and so it is not until the master removes himself from that uh, process to that person can as himself ascend or herself ascend to that, uh, become part of the guild of right. lawyers or welders or doctors or whatever it is that you want to be. Um, and so, uh, so Father's a beautiful example of the fact that Maybe this is kind of the graduation of, and the Lord is finally saying, I am now relieving you of your apprenticeship, and I am calling you to share in the mission that I and the Father and the Holy Spirit have. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, take your place. Yeah. So step up, gentlemen. And, um, of course, Father mentioned also that they were probably pretty uh, ill at ease at that point they were a little freaked out mm -hmm. we'll get maybe mm -hmm. into that in right. pentecost. and pentecost of course because we know that there's mm -hmm. going to be another scene where these people are back in the locked room locked room they love uh, locking their doors right uh so they have they've gotten the call they've gotten their commission uh the master has stepped away and said okay uh, you're on your way, and, uh, you know, I don't know that anybody's clapping for them or cheering or they're throwing their caps on them. <laughs> but the fact is, is that um, as with every graduation, there is some sadness and fear about mm -hmm. uh, coming to the end of the familiar and uh, at the same time uh, branching out into, uh, well, our appointed field. Uh, so that's where we're going to see the role of the Holy Spirit and consider mm -hmm. the mystery of uh, the Holy Spirit yeah. in the life of the church and the ministry of the church. So, so for um, all of us, this what this means for us in our daily lives is is maybe that uh, we have received our commissioning, and have we allowed ourselves? We received our commissioning at our baptism, all of us, every one of us. Right. But have we allowed ourselves to be activated? And have we longed to be activated, to be uh, given orders, to be sent out on mission? So this week is maybe a week of anticipation. We're looking towards the mission. We know we've got our mind on the prize or whatever, and we're headed there. So uh, have we allowed ourselves to do that yet? Right. So um, can we make room in our lives? Mm -hmm for uh, Jesus's gift of responsibility. Yeah. You know, his commissioning. Yeah, it's no longer acceptable to sit back in church life and believe that the mission of the church and the ministry of the church is here to make you and me holy. Mm -hmm. That's that is a very typical understanding especially for lay people in the church. 
is that my job in the church is to have these people make me holy. As if it was something that we could do to you. Right. And that God could do to you without you participating. Yeah. Ta or taking cooperating. Yeah. Taking, yeah. yeah, taking responsibility for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the church, the gift of ministry, the gift of baptism, the gift of forgiveness of your sins, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So, um, so this is a time for us to consider uh, the responsibility that we are willing to take uh, because Jesus has certainly given it to us. So. Yeah. So we'll see you in the mission field. Yeah. God, God bless. bless you.